All right, so today we've got uh, Colin DeWolf and uh, Vera Donovan, and we are uh, some gym owners that have gotten together. We met through uh, the 100% Raw Federation, and um, when our doors were forced closed by the Alberta government, we, um, we got together, connected with each other, saying how can we help each other, how can we support each other through this, and what are you doing right now? <laughs> um, so we've got Colin, who is the owner of Back Alley Fitness in Medicine Hat, and we've got Barrett, who is the owner of Next Evolution Athletics in Calgary. And so we're going to go through a round table and I'm going to ask some questions that I've been curious about and uh, we'll let them expand a little bit more from here. So the first one I kind of answered for them, but if they want to ex expand on it, they sure can. And we'll start with Colin. Colin, so who are you? Where are you located? And what is the name of the space you work out of? All right. Well, obviously, you know who I am now. Um, we're located in Medicine Hat. Um, and our facility is Back Alley Fitness. We technically have a secondary location in Redcliffe, which is just outside Medicine Hat, but that would be our two locations that we have. Awesome, thank you. Barrett. Uh, well, we know who I am, obviously. Uh, I am the owner of Next Evolution Athletics in Calgary, and I contract out of Trek Fit Lab in uh, Ranch Lands in the Northwest. Awesome. All right, so why are you in the fitness industry and what drove you to this world of fitness and educating people? Uh, for myself, I once upon a time hired a strength coach to make me better at sport. Uh, that would be Barrett. Uh, and throughout that process, I realized that I as well would be uh, suited to be a, a strength coach of some sort. Uh, and then I got into it through that basically is how my journey started. Awesome. So what led you to hiring Barrett as your strength coach? What were you doing? Uh, I was doing kickboxing and I wanted to smash other people really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah, that, that was my motivation behind that is kind of getting back in. I was a little bit older when I decided to do that. Um, so I wanted to do it right. So I think we started that journey when I was like 26, 27, which as a fighter is that old, oldish. Old. It's yeah. starting to get old. <laughs> Middle to late the end of your career, really. Yeah, really. Yeah. So, and then I retired at around 30. So short career too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's well, you did pretty so, good, I guess. <laughs> yeah. On a few things. So. <laughs> All right, Barrett, why are you in this industry? And uh, apparently you've been educating for a very long time. Yeah, I've been around the block. I'm an old dog in the field. <laughs> um, oh, man, how do I explain getting into it? I grew up in the middle of nowhere, New Brunswick, and I kind of fell into it by accident because when I was playing hockey, um, I just started working out when I turned 16 because – there was nothing better to do in New Brunswick a lot of the time and it just improved my hockey and the better at strength training and learning how to do things better and it was just basic bodybuilding stuff the better I got at hockey and the more training I did the better I got at hockey and I got an offer to play in triple a in my second year peewee and uh we couldn't do it because a, it was it was such a, a commitment to my family and it was such a, a, a hard thing for them to do that uh, it was almost impossible with the money and the driving and the commitment to it but i only got that offer simply because i was stronger than most of the other guys there and then flash forward a few years go to university study kinesiology graduate not sure what i'm going to do uh go to Japan, come back, move to Calgary to become a cop. I take this uh, job at a gym in Calgary because I realized it's actually a, a job that you can actually do there. And at the time in New Brunswick, maybe there was like six full-time trainers in Atlantic Canada. Like there's, there, it wasn't a big field, but in Calgary at the time it was. So uh, as I was going through the police force, I took that job and then I realized that you can actually make a career of that. And that was... 13 years ago yeah 13 years ago and I haven't looked back since so that's kind of how I got into it cool that's awesome 
I love hearing everybody's stories on how they like found their way into where they love to be now. So it's really interesting that way. Um, all right. So Colin, what is your wheelhouse? You know, the thing that you coach or teach the very best and you have a super solid understanding of something that you like, if you were told it was the only thing you could share for the rest of your life, that's what you would do. Um, I like to focus on strength training specifically. Um, I kind of, well, I started a powerlifting team here in Medicine Hat, and they, they've they done quite well throughout the process. Yeah. I've invested yeah. a lot of education in that uh, that regard, done a bunch of seminars with a lot of big names in the field. Um, that, that's that been kind of a, a passion of mine, right? And that's kind of, that's what I found myself uh, moving into when I re retired from fighting, because like as an athlete, that's you got to do something or you do nothing. Right. So that was, uh, that's what I transitioned into. And it's, it's something that people can do long term, which is why I think I like it. There's not a time cap on it. Like as a fighter, you have a time cap and then you just cannot sustain doing that any farther. Um, so for me, that's what I got into. That's what I have a passion for. And I'd like to say I'm decent at uh, coaching. So Cool. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, Barrett, you're up. What's your wheelhouse? Uh, I'm strength coach, man. Like, I just like to pick up heavy shit. <laughs> so, you know, it's a uh, again, we're all in the same powerlifting federation, so we all have the specialty of of uh, power uh, powerlifting. But probably one of my bigger wheelhouses is a. Uh, most people, most people don't realize is actually field sport development. <laughs> like I do a lot of work with a lot of field sport athletes and lacrosse, field hockey, rugby, uh, a lot of sports like that. So that's one of the things I'm, I really, really enjoy doing. Um, it's, it's kind of fun. Don't get me wrong. I love powerlifting. I mean, heavy stuff is awesome, but uh, that's probably one of the other wheelhouses I, I'm pretty, I'm starting to get known for, I think. <laughs> yeah, like that, that spatial problem solving, large playing field, where do you need to be? Well, even though you're not there yet, that type of stuff, or? Well, or, uh, more in the sense of, uh, field sports are interesting because the way people train for them, it, it's definitely kind of interesting because I, I kind of break it up into three components uh, for it. And like, you have like, you're on the field training, like your sport practice. And then you have like, you're in the gym training, which is like developing strength and power in the, in the, in the major lifts and, and, and the rest of your body working in the weak areas. But there's a gray area that needs to be covered. And it's usually through, um, what I like to use, like modified strongman training, like picking up odd objects, carrying odd objects, uh, dragging things, pushing things that I find covers the gray area really well. Yep. So teams like rugby, do really well that where they have the gym time where they're training there then they come and do like modified strong like picking up stones and then and then doing like field training but understanding that athletics doesn't happen in a vacuum so if you're trying to unless you're doing something like like light power lifting where it's like this is the only thing this is the only movement you must do then you're done and you, go to the next thing. you have to have the ability to perform high intense movements high intensity movements uh full body movement when you're fresh, tired, and half dead. Yep. And you have the ability to repeat that effort over and over and over, depending on the sport. So if you understand that sports doesn't happen in a vacuum and understand that gym is one part, the field is one part, but you have to understand that middle gray area, uh, it makes a huge difference. And uh, it's shown for all the field athletes that I've had to work with so far that they're all doing this on their field. Yeah, so. Awesome. All right. So, um, what are, what, what types of things when it comes to coaching do you try to avoid? It could be a particular sport, uh, school of thought, or even a type of training method or training style that we see out there. Um, for myself, I try not to, uh, adhere too strictly to any one, uh, school of thought. Mm -hmm. I think when you box yourself into a corner, uh, it becomes very hard to get out of that corner, right? And that's something that's very common in the industry where you have people that stake their entire careers on one aspect of one thing rather than looking at the whole big picture, right? Yeah. So even like with powerlifting, I don't just like, I know powerlifting coaches that 
it is just the three lift is pretty much all they do. And I'm like, yeah, no, you need to have other components in place to deal with that, right? So even within that wheelhouse, like it is, yes, you only have three things you need to perform, but there's alternate ways to achieve that goal of performing well in there. So that's one, I, I think the killer of a lot of things for people is they back themselves into a corner that way, right? Like there's a, a multifaceted approach to almost any problem that is probably going to get you a more well-rounded result that'll last longer, in my opinion. No, I, well, I, I support that opinion. <laughs> Barrett? Um, it, it's roughly the same. Like I find, uh, I, tr I try not to lock myself in and I found earlier in my career that I did and it really limited my ability to see outside the box and it really limited my uh my um development overall because there's so many different ways to get uh stronger for example like I've 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 done the traditional method I've done linear periodization I've done conjugate method I've done undulating periodization you, know, you name it it's it's all about what I keep telling people it's it's the combination of art and science so once you understand the foundation, the science of it, and how it, it kind of breaks down, how you apply it as a coach is, is the true art form of what you're going to do. And that's what people like don't quite understand, I think, is they think, oh, I got a, I got a trainer. He got a certification on the weekend course like two weeks ago. He's good to go. And like, like, that's great if it works. But, you know, pretty much everyone in, in this little form right now has forgotten more than most of those people will ever learn. Like, like just from our backgrounds, like I've been exposed to some of the best coaching in North America with Tampa Bay Lightning strength conditioning coach, powerlifting coaches, uh, strength coaches. And I've been very fortunate to have that. And I've worked with a lot of those guys and they've been, it's been super helpful because seeing all those different styles um, allows you to look at things differently. Yeah. And I find when you get locked into one specific style, I think that's what I try and avoid the most. Whereas in my earlier in my career, I, I would prescribe to that style and that's what I did. Yeah, and to that, what works for one person won't work for the next person. So you have to find the thing that, that works for each individual. It might be a slight variance, but it's required for you to have that flexibility and that knowledge to be able to make those changes too, be it age, lifestyle, physiology, whatever the case may be. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, that is, oh, I have one more, sorry. Um, so list two character traits that you believe to be valuable for everyone to strengthen, build, and share throughout your life? Um, I think as it pertains to uh, life and training, resilience of uh, not only mind but body, uh, as well as patience. I think patience is something that a lot of people overlook. They're far too eager to go after things and they end up hurting themselves. Yeah. And a lot of times, or getting a straight, or, or oh, it's not working, and they abandon ship way too early. Yeah. And sometimes you need to stay the course a little bit longer to see what's going to happen. Yeah, that's a, that's a monster one. Like, patience, I think, goes hand in hand, especially in the strength field. Like, how many times, how many times in the strength world has someone been stuck on a PR for three or four months? Mm -hmm. Three years. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, patience is one of the most crucial. Uh, crucial things I recommend everyone and uh, probably open-mindedness I found I get a lot of athletes that come in with a very like this is how I train it's like well that's how you've been training but it's not working for you so now I have to try something different and they're so resistant to change that they kind of almost lock themselves into that little box where they can't get ahead you know say for powerlifters are a great example they think if they do any more than three reps they're gonna get weaker well there's periods of times in a block where you have to do higher reps just to give a your joints a break and be build a capacity up you're not fit enough to be strong like you're not going to get stronger <clears throat> you have to have that ability to move multiple repetitions over a period of time and then back up the heavy stuff you got to build that muscle mass you can't just hammer 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 and i find those two like patience and i, I would say open-mindedness cool yeah that's awesome thank you very much you guys um appreciate it and uh we will probably going to more detailed private one-on-one -on -one interviews as time progresses as well. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. No problem. That was fun. Yeah.